And a very big aloha. I'm Cindy Palos here with a wonderful woman who I just adore, Deidre Teagarden, the executive director of the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, came in for a special show today. Yes. Thank, thank you for coming in, Deidre. Thank you for doing this. Thank, thank you for uh, calling and setting this up. Well, we wanted to do um, a special uh, update on what's going on with Nisei Veterans Memorial Center and do a tribute to an amazing woman who you had the pleasure of meeting and knowing, Irene Hirano Inouye. Yes who passed away and um, who, with all the news of COVID-19, didn't get a, a chance to be recognized to the full ex extent that I think you and I would like to see her recognized. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I, I agree with you and I, I thank you for reaching out. And I know her, her extended family and those whose lives uh, she, she touched over the years uh, appreciate what you're doing. And you were kind enough to suggest that we talk to Jill Takuda who was a former Democratic member of the Hawaii Senate representing the 24th District and um, also was is, and is uh, a director, um, outside director of the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center. That's right. I know Jill will be calling in um, in, in a few minutes. She, um, Jill has a, a very long history both with um, Irene and the late Senate, the late United States Senator, um, and that uh, you know that work that they they all did, and and she's very involved with the Inouye Foundation, the Inouye Institute. So I think she is a perfect person to um, express her um, memories and and remarks on on Irene. And yes, uh, Jill is very very involved with our center. She was uh, our executive director for a while and moved into the external director position. So she's just been um, hugely instrumental in um, helping us with funding. We know we are enclosing our pavilion uh, up at the up at the center and uh, she's you know been very uh, involved with that with uh, grant funding from the state as well as here at the county so we're just thrilled that she's involved with us and uh, we we love everything she does you know her grandfather was actually in the three-year swim club and was a member of the military intelligence service as well so she definitely has that Nisei veteran connection and that that history as well amazing and and um, I just have to congratulate you everyone has been watching for a long time the making of that wonderful mural oh. that Kurt Kar Karakawa uh, has been doing it took yes. what, about a year to do that mural almost a year but uh, from start to finish yes that's about right and he expected it to go a little bit faster but um, what happened was it's lovely you know people would drive by the center and jump out of the car and give him everything from avocados and mangoes <laughs> cups of coffee and they just wanted to talk with him and thank him and uh, really really some amazing stories uh, that he shares with the whole process so it ended up taking a little bit longer um, but it, it's done now and once the whole COVID-19 passes we will have a more proper um, unveiling although you can see it as it is now um, you know when all of this is passed so we'll we'll keep you updated and it just got recognized it did we just received the email today uh brian moto our board president sent it over to us but the historic Ho hawaii foundation has presented the um, program award to the mural wall at the nisei veterans memorial center um, in recognition of, you know, this educational resource reminding the public of a significant event in Hawaii history and how it impacted the Maui community. Uh, the mural stands as a reminder of what these men stood for and the sacrifices that they made as a result of the war. So they are going to be presenting a, the award to the, the center as well as Kurt Kurakawa sometime after the COVID-19 passes. But we... Um, want to give a big shout out to Jim Neese, the architect who nominated us uh, for this award. And we're, yeah, we're, we're thrilled. We just found out today, right before I came in. It's such a nice award to have. And I remember when that thing just had a sign, the hillside there had a sign coming. Coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then for a long time. And then, then finally, you know, the dream was made true. And it was a dream that goes way back. It, it goes. It, it, it goes back to the Nisei vets. It does. It goes back to uh, the, the 1950s when the men came. You know, after the war, they came back and they were having a, a meeting and they adopted this slogan of continuing service as their.
their motto at a luncheon in 1952. And they each island uh, had something different, but on Maui, that resulted in the idea of our our center. Uh, fast forward to the 80s with Leonard Oka, Hiroshi Arizumi, Stanley Izumigawa, that, um, you know, they, they got the land, and at first we were, they started the campus with the adult daycare center and the Concha Preschool, which is the first intergenerational center within the within the state and then our education center downstairs um, was built uh, a few years after that we actually just celebrated seven years oh, wow. in our location I think on Monday and think of all the people and wonderful events and different museum sites and talks and Wonderful things going on there. I know there were some beautiful events you were planning that had to be canceled. Our workshops, yes, yes they are postponed, mm -hmm. uh, but they will, as soon as we get the all clear, we will gently reopen our workshops, um, you know, in this, this new normal, whatever mm -hmm. this new normal is going to be. Uh, but we're, we're looking forward to, to doing the workshops, whether it's in person, I'll, perhaps also, you know, via Zoom or something like that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. And meanwhile, happen. you're getting ready for another exhibit. You've been cleaning and going through everything, haven't you? Through everything. Uh, we're taking this downtime to um, focus on our archives. Melanie, who is our research archivist, has been uh, working to digitize all of the files that we, we haven't been able to digitize yet. So uh, it's going to be great when we reopen. Uh, we'll have the Rescue of the Lost Battalion exhibit ready for people to come in and see and uh, just, you know, really enjoy and learn a little bit about these stories. And I love the fact that you were showing some of these wonderful free movies on Saturday. And, you know, a lot of people getting a chance to go there that normally wouldn't go to events because it wasn't just the exhibit, but all these wonderful uh, chances for people to learn and embrace a part of our culture, our island, and our people um, in a way that um, it just is so beautiful to see, beautiful well, to see, because people are finally understanding the whole story. That's right. And and we say, you know, even though we are the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, which means second generation Japanese, um, you do not have to be Japanese American. You don't have to have any connection uh, with with war. You know, with this, the message of the center transcends ethnicity. It transcends um, gender and all of that. So we, you, it's a center for everybody, and we try to have a little bit of everything based in the values of the Nisei veterans. Those values of patience and loyalty, humility, um, having strength. Uh, in the face of adversity, things like that, things that we are all experiencing right now. Well, I've learned a lot, and, and um, when I was calling you about trying to get this set up, and you're so kind always and so supportive, um, we were talking about the fact that you did get a chance to meet and when you first met Irene Hirano and Noi. Uh, when did you first get a chance to meet her? Actually, it was uh, when I was the protocol officer for the state under Governor Abercrombie. Uh, it was the lying in state service for the late senator is when I first met her. I think we have Jill Takuda on the line. Uh, a big aloha to you. Jill, how are Hi, you? Hi, Cindy. <laughs> well, I'm here with Deidre. Hi, Jill. Hi. We were just talking about the wonderful Irene Hirano Inouye, and um, actually just mentioning when Deidre first met her, um, mm -hmm. and 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 she suggested you call him because you had a chance to know her, work with her. Of course, when you were in the in the Senate, you realized the work that was being done that was so important. So um, Deidre and I said, "Gosh, wouldn't it be great if you could call in and share some of your memories of this wonderful woman?" Oh, well, thank you so much, and thank you for, you know, really kind of highlighting the life of Irene Inouye, um, even above and beyond um, being the late senator's widow. She has such a strong commitment to Hawaii, to women, to Japanese Americans throughout the country, and even strengthened global relationships um, between the United States and Japan, and, and she really was a vision and an inspiration, and um, for me, a really fond memory is the fact that you know, her last visit to Hawaii, she was able to come to Maui, uh, go to the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, um, and also be able to meet Kurt Kurokawa, oh, who my. has been, I know, you know, I'm sure we'll have lots of conversations about him. Um, 
but it was just very special to be able to meet him, see the work he's done with the mural, uh, and be able to make um, a really, it was a very personal, and it was one of the big things she wanted to do was to make a decision on who would be the artist to paint the senator's picture uh, that will be placed in the United States um, Senate. You know, that's not something that you get every day in terms of that honor, but also that recognition. First, uh, person of color, uh, Asian American, definitely from Hawaii, to be painted and have the portrait put up in the United States Capitol. Uh, but more importantly, to be done by a local boy from Maui. I think that's just great. I do, so. too. Did do you get a chance to hear? We were just talking about the fact that Kurt got recognized. Right, for the yes. uh, Historic Hawaii Foundation. So we're um, we're so thrilled. I mean, for, how how wonderful that not only that, mm-hmm. and she got to he got to meet the this wonderful woman and got to do the the beautiful painting in the Senate, and it's the first I didn't realize it was the first painting of, of that's going to be in the Senate of someone um, of Asian American descent in the Senate. Isn't that that is just a life changing uh, situation for Kurt? It's it definitely is, you know. And again, he's working on the sketches like mad right now, but. Um, to me, all of this really wouldn't have come together and the stars online had it not been for um, Deidre and her vision and putting all the pieces together so that we could have this beautiful mural that would then um, just kind of connect all the dots. They've been mm-hmm. looking for a long time for an artist. They talked to a number of people, seen different types of sketches. Um, but Kirk's ability to capture uh, not just the Asian face, but the feeling and the emotion that they have and portray that in his work, I think really um, kind of nailed it home that this was the one. And so wow. again, thanks to NVMC and this mural, really helped align so many different stars together. We were just so. talking, Deidre and I, about the beginnings and the support that came to make this dream of the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center possibility. And that was, of course, helped by you and Irene and, and Senator Noy, and, and it was indeed a dream come true um, that wouldn't have been mm-hmm. possible, again, with everything coming together with the work that Senator Inouye did and the work that his wife did. It's it's mm-hmm. so true. And I, I also think for, um, you know, Irene, when you, when you think of all that she has done globally and nationally and, and locally, it's all about building those bridges and giving that next generation uh, opportunities. I think I, you know, when you when you talk to people and you talk about Irene, that's always part of the conversation. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, just that, right? Just building that bridge and making sure that whatever whatever knowledge she had, uh, she shared with with other people, so that they they too could you know move forward. And uh, you know, so I think she will. Um, she, her legacy will definitely live on, as does the, the late senator's legacy, of course. I think both in their own right, they've given so much um, to our community and the global community. I asked mm-hmm. Deidre a few moments ago how she first, how and where she first met Irene. When did you first meet her? Oh, gosh. I have to think back. Um, it was before the senator passed away, you know, when they... Um, had first gotten married and she was really supporting a lot of the work that he was involved in and vice versa. He was really um, working with her on a lot of her efforts, the U.S. Japan Council, Tomodachi program. Again, to Deidre's point, it was about mentorship. It was about teaching the next generation and creating bonds. Um, many of those things, I should, should add, is very much in alignment with what the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center's vision and mission truly is. So lots of parallels there. Um, but really had the honor in the last five or six years to work closely and, um, you know, be with her at, at different events through the Daniel K. Inouye Institute, which I've worked with for about, um, I think, about six years now. The years wow. are going by very quickly. Wow. Uh, but really being able, through the Institute, to continue to carry on Senator's vision, his commitment to bipartisanship and courage, um, to teaching the next generation, and a lot of those things you see um, continue today. Um, so it was really nice to be able to see the seeds that Senator planted. Um, Irene really embraced and made sure that that was continued on, um, whether it was different programs that we've done, uh, making sure that Hawaii continues to have access, regardless of our physical geographic isolation, but again, also making sure that um, we celebrate the talents of home. And again, to Kirk's acknowledgement, uh, making sure that the person who really 
uh, portrayed the senator was someone that looked like him and came from the same place as he did. So very special. Well, when you think about the legacy, um, there's all kinds of ways that this work that was done by her and her husband, um, the legacy is a living legacy now with the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center. I was just talking to Deidre about how amazing the interaction is with this beautiful, beautiful Nisei Veterans Memorial Center that has so much to give and, and teaches so much and has really brought multi-generational people together and people from all around the world, right? That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. And, um, you know, if you if speaking to Kirk's mural, um, for those who haven't seen it, you know, we, we really um, encourage you to come by the center. It's he, he utilized photographs from our archives. So these are our true photos. Um, he changed them just a little bit to, so it doesn't look like any one specific veteran. But Toward at the end of the mural, you'll see this this young family looking back at the at the veterans, and then above everyone's heads, you can see these the sakura blossoms, the the pink cherry blossoms, mm. going through throughout the mural. Again, speaking to the veterans, what their what they wanted their legacy to be. You know that continuing service, as we were talking about earlier, making sure that. Things are better um, for that next generation. And the mural is definitely a living legacy, and it's you know, our collective hope uh, at the, the center that when people come in, they can learn not only about these men, their stories, and the, the family stories, but, you know, share their own stories. We, we have a lot of um, people who come through the doors that aren't Asian American but had, um, you know, uh, a story that connects them to the past, and we're always very humbled when people share those stories. Um, it can it can be very very emotional, and uh, you know when you when you walk in the center. So it's it is it's definitely a living a living breathing space um, mm. that that changes um, on on continually. Aren't you interested and in, and amazed in a way, Jill? How this has also brought out some fantastic movies in the last five years that have been mm-hmm. able to share that story around the world? Well, you know, I think especially given the times that we're in, um, I think it's really humbling and it's good to see that we're starting to learn from the lessons of the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, we realize that it's not as far back um, as it seems that some of those same things keep coming up over and over again, whether it be the injustices or the situations we find ourselves in as a state, country, uh, and a world. And can we learn like our Nisei veterans have always pushed us, learn from their experience, um, live those values that they promoted so that we don't have to make the same mistakes Mm -hmm. um, and we can be better and stronger by standing on their shoulders. And to Deidre's point, I think that is the value of centers like um, NVMC. It provides a safe place and a home for so many who come from different backgrounds to be able to see a bit of themselves and their own personal experience um, in the center and walk away stronger and better and looking forward. So I think um, the fact that NVMC came together with so many people lending help and lending assistance to making this dream a reality and that so many hands and hearts from across Maui and the state and the country, quite frankly, continue to shepherd this this vision, I think really speaks to how important places like the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center are um, given everything that we're going through right now. Uh, I absolutely agree. And, and, and we were talking uh, a little earlier before you called about um, what the future holds. And we're all mm-hmm. going to be coming out of this, and we don't even know when, um, with even right. a stronger commitment. And we're going to be all a little changed by this because it's been our form of a um, not World War II, but, but certainly what our generation might be able to have some compassion and understanding of what it takes to sacrifice some things. And mm-hmm. and I, I think we're going to be coming back in a different way. Have Was there a memorial service for Irene, and, and, and had that happened yet, or is that postponed till later, or what's happening with that? Well, you know, I mean, as and every family right now that's having to deal with a loss is coming to terms with this, you can't have memorials, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you can't gather to grieve. And mm-hmm. so um, up until this point, it really just has been a lot of, digital, not in person, Mm -hmm. um, shared celebrations Mm -hmm. of her life and her legacy and her ongoing, you know, all the ongoing things that are happening um, because of her and who she's inspired. Um, And memorial services, 
uh, will will take place. But as you mentioned, you know, we're not sure when we're going to quite get out of this. Mm -hmm. um, so in the meantime, you know, it's been really heartwarming to see so many people talk about how she's inspiring the work that they've done and they'll continue. And, and that's the best kind of memorial, mm -hmm. you know, quite frankly, the one that lives on in mm -hmm. all of us that we could ever ask for as individuals. So. I was uh, just suggesting to Deidre, wouldn't it be nice to have something at the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center when it does open up again in the, maybe the fall or sometime? to do a special um, interactive way of sharing memories uh, of her there. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think all of these things, and, and more importantly, I think what she would really love to see is um, how are, are people taking individual action and finding heroes within themselves? Mm -hmm. You know, I think both Senator and Irene, um, they weren't ones to self-promote and, and things like that, but mm -hmm. really it was for them about inspiring um, uplifting and supporting others and you know again to the mission of NVMC to find the hero within yourself I think some connection to how we all have had to be uh, individual heroes and stand up in our own right mm -hmm. especially during this time of crisis I think she would really um, appreciate those celebrations of individual um, you know heroism and action mm -hmm. um, as a part of you know a celebration of her life as well that's very well said, yeah. and, and that's something we're, I think we're all exploring uh, in our own ways, you know, from the people who are out on the front lines, the doctors and the nurses and the personnel with the firefighters and the police, and also people in government. People don't realize how even the government, of course, has been impacted with this right now. Definitely. Right? <laughs> And and those who's who's uh, who are staying home and and can't go out and maybe want to be going out and wanting wanting to to do more, but they're doing their part by staying home. Mm -hmm. I mean that mm -hmm. takes that takes a commitment as well. Uh, I think um, when we when we come out of this, we will have a new appreciation for perhaps things that uh, we we took for granted in the in the past and. Uh, you know, getting together with friends and you know, having that one-on-one -on -one connection is going to mean so much more to us. I, I'm sure you have a, a little different view being based in Oahu than we do here. <laughs> We've had our own challenges, but you're there in the center. What's it been like for you trying to, you know, function and in, in with, of course, seeing the numbers increasing and what's been going on in Oahu? Yeah, it's, I have a feeling it's not that much different. <laughs> Than it is on Maui, mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of it, for those of us who are able, it's how do we continue, um, if we're able, to safely um, help so many of those that are in need, you mm -hmm. know, and and that just seems sometimes like a mountain that you're just trying to climb up, whether it's, you know, reaching out and helping to do Meals on Wheels, mm -hmm. you know, get masks to different frontline providers, like you were mentioning, um, just doing everything we all individually can to lend support since... Quite frankly, for many, the safest situation for themselves and others is to stay sheltered. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, my husband and I, we go out once, twice a week, and we do volunteer service where we can. Because, again, uh, while Oahu has a lot of options and opportunities around us, we have so many people, and there are many people uh, like on Maui and Kauai and, the, and Hawaii Island that are somewhat shut off right now and really need those that are able to get them access to service. So um, it's been really uplifting and inspiring to see the different ways in which we've come together as a community. Um, and for many of us, though, it is, it's a huge concern that keeps you up at night in terms of how do we make mm. sure that the inequities don't get bigger for mm. those who don't have access to various things from health care and shelter and money to, to education, you know, mm -hmm. and all those things. So it's, um, it's, it's a different new normal that we're, we're dealing with yep. right now. But, um, you know, as Deidre mentioned, when we all come out of this, it, it is going to be us really appreciating our ability to gather together. You know, um, she and I were both watching the Maui County Council meeting the other week. I'm very impressed at how they're doing public testimony and keeping people engaged uh, without people being in the same room together. And um, I was testifying on behalf of Nisei Veterans, and I reminded them, I said, you know, uh, we took for granted before, I think, our ability to come together and just talk about those things that needed to be talked about to learn and to gather together in places we feel safe and comfortable in like the center um, and now being cut off from it we realize just how important that is for community to connect is to physically be together and to share and to learn and um, 
So I do think when we all come out of this, those kinds of opportunities that we took for granted before, I think will now be elevated and celebrated um, and appreciated so much more um, when we're able to not socially distance and we're able to come together and learn and celebrate and share together. So well said. Well, we have just a couple minutes le- left, and I want you to share, please, the um, the website for the Daniel K. Noy Institute, which I really never had a chance to explore before. How do people find out about that? Well, it's very simple. You just got to go to dkii.org. <laughs> okay, that's good. dkii.org. I and, love those simple, yeah. simple websites. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and and the website for the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center is nvmc.org. And there's going to be some very interesting things coming. We re- yes, we uh, like mm-hmm. I said, we postponed our workshops, right, Jill? But um, yes. we're we're working together. Jill is very tech savvy, and she's going oh, to good. help us. <laughs> Put a lot of this um, online, maybe do some webinars instead of always doing in person. So, you know, have a little bit of have a little bit of both. Uh, But we're trying Mm -hmm. to we're keeping our website updated. We're sending out a weekly Wednesday update. So if you are interested in getting our emails, check out the website NVMC as in Nisei Veterans Memorial Center dot org. Sign up and uh, we're staying active on social media as well. Melanie every week posts a, a video or something uh, something mm-hmm. from our archives and a little history to go with it on our Facebook page. And that is? Uh, it's go to Facebook and then just type in Nisei Veterans Memorial Center. And, uh, yeah, we're just trying to stay engaged both old old school, you know, sending out our newsletters, which we just went out and as well. And good newsletters. They I have are. to applaud you. Very good job on the newsletters, really. <laughs> well, Sadine and her team up at uh, Say Designs put this, puts this together for us. We have an excellent group of contributing editors and writers, and we can't say enough to the staff at the Kahului Post Office. <laughs> those, those, that team is amazing. They um, send all 2,000 out for us and Printers Inc. We have a bunch of people who help us, and we are so mm-hmm. honored um, for their Kokua. Well, thank you for the great work you both do. Jill, thank you for the, taking the time to call in and share oh, no. your, your thoughts and inspirational ideas and memories of Irene. And, and I have to thank you, too, Deidre, for the wonderful work. You've really done such great work for the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, and it, it's, it's really made a difference in people's lives. So, you know, extreme gratitude to you and all the people who are out there working yeah. to keep these wonderful legacies, living legacies, and, and alive. So a big mahalo and gratitude to both of you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Aloha.